Where is everybody? Here comes Bob. Hey everybody, it's Bob from TNT to TNT Customs. It's TNT Tuesday. There we go. Um, we're kind of improvising. Uh, Mary's sick and I was running all morning, so we didn't have time to do whatever. So we're in the shop. Um, obviously, you saw Rex last week still sitting there, it's holding this part of the floor down instead of that part <laughs> of the floor. Um, we will be getting to that shortly. So in the interim, I've got the diesel gladiator in here. We're tidying up a few more loose ends. Um, it's kind of hard to show you what I'm working on because you can't see it. So yesterday I ran all the airlines through the chassis. Um, I know we had talked briefly about it last week. And it's in my car here somewhere. There's our little handy dandy air up, air down manifold. Just picked all the parts up from powder coating. Um, so this afternoon, that's my project there. Finish that system up. You can see all the ends of the lines are just stuck up here, no man's land. Um, so the chassis is all plumb. Jason's working on a little mounting tab deal for those. Um, I'll put them on this afternoon, then I can trim all the airlines length and get going on finishing that. Um, I got my slide back from powder coat. We built a full length slide to go with our fridge slide. I think we showed you bits of that last week. Uh, so that's just got to get finished, installed, drill some holes, nuts and bolts. And then I'll have my full length slide to complement the fridge slide which then pins me into what space is left so I can start designing and fabricating uh, a tank as I want onboard water, I'm tired of dragging jugs of water, it's a pain in the neck. Um, part of that will also be the, I apologize, I can't never remember their name, but it's the filtration system. So we'll use that to filter water um, if we ever had to pull water out of a creek or a stream or a cattle pond or a puddle or whatever. We can filter water and pump it into the tank. And with a little quick disconnect magic, we will also be able to use that system to pull water out of the tank, filter it and pump it into the coffee pot or the dish pan or the shower or whatever. So that's what's forthcoming there. David um, and Chris said hello. Hi. Uh, howdy and hola amigo. Um, I had noticed somewhere on your spec sheet what we're supposed to talk about was suspension. And then I saw a spec sheet that said guardian bumper. So we're we we're, get, we're gonna get organized so, now that I'm here full time. Yeah, Tammy is full time as of today. Today, yesterday, yep. today, today. I was off yesterday. Um, so we will be we'll, organized. We'll start getting this a little more pre-planned than somebody's texting me a link at nine o'clock in the morning saying this is what I'm doing, and go here, and I don't even know what that is. So, <laughs> Tanner, um, <laughs> we're just doing it Bob's way. Can I ask Which you is a, usually what yeah, happens. Right. I, one quick question I had though with the airlines, is that for airing up? Is that And down. Okay. So the valve system um, has a built-in gauge. Um, not necessarily happy with the gauge. I'm going to see if I can find one because this is a zero to 160. Right. So that's a little coarse. Um, but by opening the right valve and closing the right valve and hooking up all the tires to the chassis, you can air all four down at once. Wow. Or close that valve and open this valve and air all four up at once. 
Um, so. So you don't have to twist on the little no, deflators. It's all quick connects. Um, Do you have? It's it's all going to be connected, and you just turn the valves. Yeah, and hook the. Oh, you had to hook the, the hoses. Hook the hoses to, up okay. from the tire to the chassis. Um, but then there's several variations of this been all over the market for years. Um, this is probably the closest to the air up, air down system. Um, I, I, I think he got, the guy got the company up and running. He was doing it out of his garage in Vegas. Uh, he sold to a bigger player they kind of screwed things up and as far as I know went out of business and then a whole bunch of me too's jumped in there this is not something I'm putting into production um, it's just something I want on my Jeep I've got uh, got one on one of the original is on my JK um, and it's always worked really well for me it works good when I'm uh, as I normally am leading um, guiding, whatever you want to say, I can hook my system up, open a valve, and go help somebody. Um, not indefinitely, because it will just air down until it's flat. Oh, <laughs> you got to go back and check so it. So I got to go check every once in a while. Right. Yeah, you know, it's real easy to check. You close the valve off. Um, count three Mississippi's or whatever, um, so the whole system will stabilize. And whatever the gauge is reading is what the air pressure is in the system, which ultimately tells you what the air pressure is in your tire. Works both up and down. Um, and then you have a tank, obviously, somewhere? Nope, just the air B twin compressor. Oh, okay. Um, so it runs off of that. You got to turn the compressor on um, ahead of time. And then, then you're you'll have air pressure to this valve, open it up and it floods the manifold and obviously down to the tires and yeah, yeah, yeah. So and does it works well for me. I don't have to uh, kneel, bend over, drag hoses, nothing. You can, st uh, the hoses from the chassis to the tire, are, I think I got them cut at like three feet. Um, so you walk them four little hoses up and they stuff away you don't know, have to deal with a big long hose since this is my build and you know it's my way <laughs> i also teed in underneath uh, a press into the pressure side or the compressor side and ran an airline to the back i haven't fabricated that yet but there'll be a little control panel when you drop the tailgate down some switches and gauges and um, the water thing. There'll be a quick disconnect for the water spigot. Um, when you shut the tailgate, you'll never see it. It'll be right there next to the refrigerator. I also plumbed in an airline. So if the guy behind me needs air, um, we can just drop the tailgate, turn the compressor on and help whoever's behind me um, pretty rapidly and pretty easily. So, um, suspension, we built cold suspension, there, there. box checked. Uh, and no. actually Jason <laughs> so, did a pretty good um, yeah. interview on the joints. Yep, we use Summit Machine, uh, we've used Summit Machine almost exclusively um, in a roundabout way, we have used them exclusively. Our first year, we were using a Rubicon Express joint, which was made by Summit Machine. Rubicon Express outsourced that to Summit Machine. So they were making the joint, so we just cut the middleman out and we're buying the joints directly from Summit Machine. Uh, we made suggestions, others made suggestions. They internally had improved product improvements they wanted to do. Um, so that's when the Summit Machine variation, well, I don't know, Jolene can answer this. We talked to her about it too a couple of weeks ago, 15 years ago, 16 years ago. They started bringing out their own brand. Um, 
obviously product improved. It was a much better deal, uh, better joint. We've used them forever. So um, we still use them. They're still great joints. Um, all this gee whiz, non-serviceable stuff that's all over the industry right now, just don't believe it. You have to service your suspension non-serviceable joints mean they wear out and instead of servicing them you replace them it's uh in my opinion from an owner perspective a jeep driver um i'd rather have a serviceable part that i can take apart put it in my hand and go yep they're all good grease them put them back together or that piece is wore out pick up the phone in my case go over to the shelf get one put it in and and be up and running. I've got joints and vehicles 15 years old. I've got thousands of miles on them, thousand, both highway and trail. And we tear them apart once a year because we do. And we clean them and grease them and put them back together again. They're, they're as close to a lifetime joint as you're going to get if you do your maintenance, um, you know. You take care of your motor by changing oil and filter, take care of your suspension by tearing stuff apart, inspecting and fixing. Um, and even I am don't practice what I preach sometimes because if I had inspected my suspension before the last trip, I would have found major cracks uh, in the lower control arm mounts on the diesel and the lower control arm mount would not have failed and left me in the middle of nowhere with the only way to fix it, a handful of ratchet straps and some ingenuity and limp it to town to weld it. So get under your Jeep, look at stuff. One uh, of the put, comments put on wrenches on stuff. <laughs> that last video, someone suggested that Bob needs a premier welder in his Jeep. Yep, it's coming. Um, I don't know that I will do, I have a Premier Power Products welding system that is on the TJ. Um, and now that racks is up front. And once I get the back of the shop rearranged and a whole host of other things that Bob has to do, the TJ will come over here. Um, does it really help me when we're for exploring with a gladiator? Um, so I'm looking into options for the gladiator. It's probably going to be some form of portable device, whereas the Premier Power Welder that I have on the TJ is alternator based, so it's permanently installed and the control box goes on wherever I put it. I think I'm gonna put it in the dash, but I don't know yet. Um, so that one's not really transferable to vehicles. The other problem you run into with JK and newer, so 07 and newer Jeeps, way more computers than anybody thought sh or anybody thinks should be on a Jeep, but that's what we're stuck with. And the newer they get, the more complicated that system gets. So the Premier Power Welder, for those of you that aren't familiar, is throttle based. You put a vernier throttle in it and you can turn a knob which gradually applies throttle to bring RPM up because you need to overdrive the alternator at idle. It's not producing the correct voltage and amperage. So you can turn the engine speed up with this veneer um, to hold whatever say 2000 rpm um, then that puts the alternator in the sweet spot flips some switches and it does its thing and you can start welding it's a stick welder which for me is no problem other than being able to see it <laughs> um, i think the portable solution i know wayne has just purchased one um, he came back from that trip and ordered one because mm -hmm. he thought he needed something in the Jeep, um, which is great because Wayne goes on most of the floor exploring trips, so we will have access to a welder. Um, 
So I, next time we're out and about together, uh, I'll bring my helmet and a few other odds and ends, probably some coupons, go over to the big shop and stamp out a couple of pieces of scrap. So after dinner, we can get that out and I can play with it and see if I like it. Um, so that is a possibility. There's several possibilities for portable welders. I just haven't decided what I want. Honestly, I haven't even looked at it. I've been doing other stuff, so. Um, Your list is never ending. No, and with my partner in crime down at the moment, that just doubles my list, so. Um, hopefully she'll be back up and running here in the next day or so. Um, well, Tanner said he was wrong. Today was supposed to be guardian bumpers. So we so can talk about those too. We can, or we can there's one right the there. But take that one with a grain of salt. That is custom. <laughs> so that's not what yours would look like yeah. if you got one. This from the bumper itself, yes. This the steel fabricated steel part. That's our standard off the shelf, uh, no hoop uh, guardian bumper. Um, it's an older version because this Jeep's been around a while. Um, it's this one still has the big rectangular cutouts for the for the lights here uh, hopefully there's still a set of them lights somewhere <laughs> if not we'll improvise and do something different now what's the difference um, between the guardian and the adventure series so we have three lines of bumpers right we have the guardian we have adventure series and now the expedition series um, the Guardian, um, it's referred to online as a frame chop. I hate that term. Yes, you're cutting. We don't chop the frame. We give you a template so you can cut the frame precisely. In my mind, chop means you grab the torch and just whack the frame off wherever you feel like whacking it off. No. We give you a bolt-on template that bolts into existing on the JK, if memory serves, the sway bar bolts. Um, so you take the sway bar off, you put our template on, put the bolts back in it, that shows you exactly where you gotta cut the frame, you cut the frame, and you put our Guardian bumper on. It takes uh, four and a half-ish inches off the front of your frame. It tucks the winch down and under the grill. Um, it is... So the winch you know, would go down yeah, in here? Yeah, the winch is down in that pocket. It is really designed around a worn 9.5 XP. World according to Bob, the only winch that should be on a Jeep other than an 8274, but an 8274 is difficult to mount on modern Jeeps and it blocks some critical airflow because um, it's a very tall winch because the motor sits on top of the drum instead of in line. Um, there's a couple other worn winches that will fit in this bumper. Uh, we've been worn forever. Um, I've always ran worn G winches on all my Jeeps even before we started the business because they have the reputation and the quality and I've depended on a winch in a few places and they've never failed. Your mileage may vary. If you want to buy a winch at Harbor Freight, eh, buy a winch at Harbor Freight. You know, that's up to you. Uh, the reason we like the Warren is the planetary housing is clockable, meaning you take six screws out, you slide the planetary just a little bit. Don't get carried away and pull it off because you'll have gears and shafts and all kinds of shit laying everywhere. You pull it back just a little bit and you can turn it and put it back on. So it's an equal distant pattern, bolt pattern. You can clock that, the end with the free wheel and engage handle. You can clock that wherever you want to clock it. Um, Warren is the only one that does that. All the Chinesium, winches uh, for, e I would assume, for ease of assembly, so they can only put it together one way, does not have a standard bolt pattern, meaning it only goes one way because the 
the pattern is here and here and here and then really close you know what I mean it it only goes one way so those winches present a problem in that the handle ends up right in the grill so you're going to have to modify your grill if you have some of these other winches um, some of the new trends like the Xeon um, has an integrated solenoid pack thing so they look streamlined and cool and whatever we've had customers make them work by taking that solenoid pack off and rearranging stuff it's more work than what it's worth in my opinion just put a good winch on it well, not that a Xeon's a bad winch but they're big they're very big they're very bulky because they have all this it's kind of like riding uh, if you're into Harleys riding a wide glide that's been stripped or a wide glide that has all the bagger and fairing and all that cool stuff yes it's still a wide glide underneath you just have all this stuff on top of it that's kind of my analogy of a Xeon it's a good winch underneath you just have all this stuff all over it they're physically big um, our adventure series is what people refer to as a mid-width uh, bumper it's just that it's grill width um, winch mounts up on top it's real easy to deal with guys at home can bolt them on gals whatever um, they bolt right on the winch sits on top you got easy access to everything um, factory fog lights go back in on a JK some JLs depend because JLs have two or three different fog light assemblies so it depends on which fog light your Jeep came with on a JL or a Gladiator um, but we have means to get you the right lights if you don't have the right lights um, and then our newest is the Expedition Series which is wider than the Adventure Series um, and the reason we went wider because we needed to lower the winch cradle down into the frame rail, kind of like a guardian. It tucks down and under the grill. Um, and that was for airflow purposes, mainly for the diesel. Is that um, the, and that's what's on this one. The gladiator here? And by lowering the winch down into the frame rails, we had nowhere to put fog lights because on the Adventure Series, the fog lights are here inside the frame rail. Well, that's all full of winch now, so can't put lights there. So we had to move the lights to the outside of the frame. Um, this is a two-piece design. It has a, a, a heavy steel cradle that goes on the Jeep first and then the bumper shell goes on over top of that. So we made the bumper shell uh, fairly light um, to shed some pounds. The skid plate is aluminum, sheds more pounds, and it has a proprietary light system. The only lights that fit in this bumper, your mileage may vary, but as, as the world of TNT, the only lights that fit in this are the Baja Design Pro three inch, three and a half inch, whatever. It's their small. You can either get them amber or yes, right amber here. or clear. Um, we like the amber because it does snow here. Um, and lately we've had a lot of rain and fog. Amber is bitching in those conditions. Works good in dust. Um, I'm typically leading on all the four exploring, so I don't really have dust in front of me. You could almost um, die. <laughs> but sometimes the order, you know, if we end up on a trail that, that or a road that dead ends, um, instead of me getting back out to the front, we just kind of turn everybody around and I end up in the back. So, um, which via three my tri-band radio i can lead from anywhere within probably 10 miles so it really doesn't matter where i'm at that that helps when i'm in the back and have the embers on because you can see they do shine through dust pretty well so we like amber um 
Back to the Guardian, you can get that version without the, obviously without the custom tube work. Um, I, I can't produce that tube work. We actually had to piece it in the middle to get everything because that is a custom one-off grill. Uh, during COVID, uh, a friend of a friend was quickly unemployed because NASCAR wasn't doing their normal NASCAR deal. And that fella had a shop, still has a shop, I do believe, but whatever. In South Carolina, he produced a lot of the body panels for the cup, cup cars. So, and true, holy shit, expensive carbon fiber, the real deal. It's not, I mean, that grill weighs like less than a pound. Really? Um, yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, and so it was a price tag. So because he had to make a mold to be able to, that's vacuum, actual vacuum sealed or vacuum pulled. I don't know what, I'm not a carbon fiber guy. I don't know what the right terminology is, but I know it goes on a table and there's a mold and they put sheets of the carbon fiber and build that all up. And then it sucks it down to the mold and gets all the air out and that's how it can be as thin and as strong and as light and all that fun stuff with carbon fiber so there are two of those grills on the planet um, now that NASCAR is back up and running again he probably doesn't have a whole lot of interest in producing those grills although from what I hear he still has the mold um, but they, are, they will not be for the faint of heart. I needed that grill shape um, because of the 45 inch tires, because of the Guardian bumper. I needed all that space. If anybody's put 42s on a JK, uh, you know it peels the grill right off the Jeep, unless you bump stop the hell out of it, and we don't do that. I like my suspension to move as far as it can go. Um, so it was peeling the grill and the 45s were just never gonna happen. So we had to re reinvent that grill, keep it as much JK as possible. Um, but instead of being a rectangular shape, we went back to like a CJYJ TJ grill that is trapezoidal shaped. Um, so that's why that bumper has all that custom tube work on it because we really need to protect that grill. <laughs> so, because it can't be replaced. Um, we've had some customers, I think Will down at Carnage has um, bent up some tube work um, on some of these no hoop guardians. I know there's a couple other places that have done it. The biggest headache, you know, just I want to be clear, you cannot order that bumper and I won't reproduce it unless it has that grill. The problem with a JK grill is it's rectangular shaped, so you end up with a rectangular shaped grill hoop and the ends have to come back in and weld to the side of it. There's zero strength in it. You'll just push it right off. Um, so this grill lent us the opportunity to do this one-off tube work on the front of this. So, you know, with a Guardian bumper, you have options. You can do things if you can do things, or if you have a local shop right. that can do things. Um, so you so, would, if you order TNTs, it would be everything from here down. Yeah, just a plate steel. And then we do have one with a Guardian hoop. Uh, this is a production, mm, yeah, this is a production Guardian. Typically the, the Guardian bumper with tube work, this face comes up and there's a, a gusset system that's all one piece that comes in so it's welded and it drops back down. Um, I think the light mounts are up here, whatever. It, so you can get it if you want a hoop, you can get a hoop. You just can't get the grill hoop. <laughs> um, and that's this part right in here. And then once we had the grill hoop on it, Jason and I kind of cussed and discussed it and 
and I kind of gave him some ideas what I wanted and off he went and now the fenders are tied into that grill hoop and back down into the body and that's as far as I know the only set of high line JK fenders um, those cannot be reproduced I mean, we can do anything here in the shop but it's not a shippable part um, this this cheap is kind of show, showcasing all the crazy ideas that Jason and I can come up with and physically make so um, it'll run um, we just we got some personnel issues we're working through um, we have two new mechanics now well, Nick's been here three months, four months, something in that neighborhood. Um, we have John's been here two weeks. This is his start of his third week. Um, he's doing well in the automotive shop. We brought in a guy from Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, moved here over Memorial Day weekend. Interviewed with us on Tuesday because we were closed Monday. And he starts next Monday. Yay. So we will have pretty much a full staff again, uh, finally. And Nick's going to move over here and work under me and do all the heavy lifting because <laughs> my back is killing me. <laughs> I've been over here um, working for the last couple of three weeks or whatever it's been. And, yeah. yeah, I need to get back to flying a desk. So, um, so we, as the summer progresses and Nick comes on board, Nick's a good hand. Um, so he'll start helping, and we can start making some headway on this. Jason, we've got a new welder starting in the fab shop on Monday as well. So once they kind of get show him the ropes and get him up to speed. Um, Jason will be a little freer. There's a little fab work that has to be done on this. Uh, between the two of us, we'll get that accomplished. We're gonna build a fuel cell uh, versus running the factory tank. I want a nice, smooth, as flat as possible belly. Um, so that negates putting the factory tank back underneath of it, which is more of a pain in the neck than what it's worth. Uh, this is never going to be a to the mall type Jeep, so it's getting a fuel cell in the back. Um, that way we can control size. Um, since we put a four speed Atlas in it and the exhaust has been built and the way the suspension, it's our basic suspension, but it's been tweaked. Um, the only choice for a gas tank underneath was a two-door JK um, and for those that ever want to try it a two-door JK tank will bolt in a four-door and you gain some room in some places that you need to gain room mostly the front edge but it's a small tank it's 15 gallons 16 gallons something like that um, and with the 392 under the hood and 45s and Pat's heavy foot, yeah, 15 gallons ain't gonna get you very far. So we're probably gonna go 22-ish on a fuel cell. We got a great place that's all gonna tuck in the cage and between the coilover towers and under the spare tire. And speaking of spare tire, um, we were gonna run the tire standing up, kind of on an angle in the back and we've, I think we've talked ourselves into changing that to go to a flat mounted spare on a clamp on system so that Pat can run the spare if he goes on like a week of wheeling type trip where we need a spare. But under normal everyday wheeling, you know, Pat's going to be in a hotel in Moab or St. George or wherever and um, trailer this to the event or the outing and then don't really need a spare in that because it's close by, it's on the trailer. Um, so we want to be able to remove 
despair when and not carry that dead weight because let me tell you these are dead weight they're about 210 pounds oh, good gosh. wheel and tire they're trail ready one of larry's few sets of double bead locks that made it out the door um, they're pitching wheels the tires cannot come off of them um, even if you shredded a tire, there's the bead bundle is still going to be on the wheel. Um, they're, they're a bitchin' wheel, but they're heavy. Um, and obviously a 45-inch Swamper is not a lightweight tire in and of itself. So um, they're about 200 pounds a piece. So there's no reason to carry that dead spare um, when we don't need it. Um, so we're going to make that a removable system as well. So there's some little fab stuff that's got to get done um, before we can start blowing it apart to plumb and wire it and paint and powder coat and all of that fun stuff. We still got to fab some more pieces in the dash. Um, so we got a ways to go. So Tanner brought up. The, this is the front bumper. Yes. Do you have a matching Guardian? We do have rear. a Guardian rear that is currently being discussed on a redesign. Um, you probably saw pictures of it or video uh, a month, month and a half ago. Speaking of Tanner, we need to find out how that Jeep is doing. Um, he's kind of went radio silent on us. Um, but the stretch two-door JL we did, um, we shipped it out of here because we just ran out of time. And he's and Corey's from Boston or the Bo greater Boston area. Um, he was out here and drove the Jeep home, so it it had to go because he was here. So we just chopped up the factory bumper and put it back on, so he had a bumper to get him home. Uh, Jason went back in the design shop and created a new bumper. I think that's going to become the new Guardian rear bumper across the board, meaning JK and JL. Mounting is different, but style and look. Um, I'm pretty certain we can pull off one shell with different mounts. Um, Jason did a nice job on that, turned out well. Um, we've been busy over there as well because he's shorthanded, so that project hasn't gotten forgotten. It's just kind of sitting on the back burner simmering. Um, so we'll get that back out here in the next couple of weeks. And the current Guardian bumper is a frame cut bumper. You do have to cut the frame. It sucks in up tight to the body. Um, truth be told, it's a real pain in my neck to produce because um, it's a lot of intricate brake work. Uh, this newer design is a much simpler um, piece to produce. Um, it's not as brake intensive um, or welding and metal finish intensive. So, you know, it's, it's, I think it, and it kind of ties, uh, especially if you're running a Guardian with the hoop. So you got tube work on the front, you're running our Guardian sliders, which is a flat steel slash tubular design. It will really tie the whole package together very well. So that, that's forthcoming. Um, there has been inquisition of taking that bumper once we know it fits a JL and everything works the way I want it to work, of trying it on a Gladiator and kind of combining our side bolt-on sidestep and bumper, kind of rolling that all into one pre-runnery type rear rear minimalistic bumper for a for a Gladiator. Um, that fall time frame we got too much other stuff going on to to attempt that i'm pretty happy with the factory bumper there's plenty of aftermarket bumpers out there um 
I will never, and I can say that definitively, I will never run a rear swing type rear bumper on a Gladiator. It just puts all the weight of that spare tire that much farther back and that much higher. It's just, it's never going to happen. Not on my Jeep. Um, that just lengthens it just, the... Yeah, man, it just makes yeah. everything. The departure angle's already not awesome on a Gladiator, and now you're sticking another two foot of stuff hanging off the back, and the frames on these things are pretty lightweight, so you really have to get creative in mounting, and the bumpers themselves are big and heavy, and then you throw a swing out tire on it, and to keep all of that from not vibrating and bouncing and you know, engineering speak movement of momentum is, yeah, it's just, it, I'll never do it. So there's people that do, if that's what somebody wants, go look elsewhere because TNT will never build that bumper because it just, uh, my opinion, it doesn't work. So and I like mine, I'm used to it. This 37 fits underneath with a quick trim of the hitch and a little re-welding and a 37 goes under it easy. Um, you don't have to force anything or hold it just right as you're winching it up in there. You just crank it up and it goes in there. Stupid simple. Um, and I have no need for anything bigger than 37s on a Gladiator if I want to go play somewhere that requires 40s or 42s or 45s i have jeeps at my disposal to do that um, gladiators were never meant for that environment they're a square peg in a round hole what that jeep is set up for is what they were meant for world according to bob throw, your, landings. Gear, throw your gear in and disappear um, go have fun go see what's over the next hill if you want to go rock crawling that ain't the Jeep. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I know lots of internet folk will disagree with me, but yeah, whatever. Opinions are like bums. Everybody's got one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so um, I think that's all I got. So we briefly hit suspension. We briefly hit guardian bumpers. I rambled for a while. We got air, um, airing yeah, down, got airing air, up. Air system Welding. coming. Um, as soon as I get it done, maybe we'll do a, you know, this is a, what you can do to your Jeep video. Um, it's pretty simple. You can get all the parts are readily available. If somebody wanted to build their own system, the two little or the five little brackets. So the four frame tabs and the thing that goes under the hood that holds the manifold, we can sell you a kit cheap. You can go to Home Depot, Lowe's, Amazon, whatever floods your boat, get all the, get all whatever fittings and hose you would like and spend an afternoon with a tubing cutter and some zip ties and knock Are yourself the brackets, out. Can you see them from here? No. Oh, they're, they're up. Yeah, well, it goes right, right there. You can, it would be, if the hood was closed, it's right under the bit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So it's just a simple little bracket. It's pretty straightforward. Goes that way. It amazes me how you it's, can think of that. Stuff. It's two of the fender bolts. The AC line sticks through here. The one air line goes down through there. The other air line is going back this way and down. It's really simple bracket. And the four little tabs that go on the frame. And the bracket is to keep the hose secure. Yeah, that's where the manifold mounts, so you can turn valves without the whole thing flopping okay. on you. So it's a real simple little setup. Um, I guess if somebody wanted that part of the kit, it's just flat metal. We can cut them, we can make them, we can bend them, we can ship them, whatever. But I'm not going to build all hoses, cut the length and everything. You just do that yourself. Figure it out. Yep. It's pretty simple. Um, all right so yeah make sure you guys go to youtube and subscribe because we're going to replay this on youtube later and we'll see you next tuesday and we're going to be organized bob next tuesday could be oh maybe uh, next tuesday conundrum. tanner yeah <laughs> so it's tanner
Tanner. So you're get, getting fair notice. <laughs> Tanner's on board next week. Um, cause maybe Mary and I, it depends on how she's feeling. Um, and Tammy and David are joining DB Overland out of the Casper area, um, for an Oregon trail trip. Um, so we will be out and about on Tuesday. So probably no service, or if we do have service, it'll be blasted and down I-80 headed back this way. Um, so tune in next week. Tanner's Tanner talk. has the yeah has the mic. So I don't know what he's going to talk about, but he he was trained here. He'll wing it. I think he's <laughs> supposed to get an interview, but we'll right. we'll figure that out. So we got a week instead of Tanner Tuesday two hours. <laughs> I got. <laughs> All right. See so, you, folks. See you.